you know, I started one, you know, because they've got, you know, McLaurin Hall and things like that. That's, mm, if they start rewriting all that, that's, that's going to be sad. Oh, we're live. There you go. Let's see if, now I've got to share the broadcast, share with specific people, share with everyone. There we go. Now we've got everyone on board. We've got Miss Kasha. We've got Mimi. We've got L Brooks, True Faith. The whole team is here. So it's all happening. So guys, I am exhausted. Hello. And I am lying here in bed because I really want to go to sleep. But I thought it was absolutely important to interview the awesome Lynn. And this young lady had shared with me a great story. Oh, I, I may, she may cut in and out because <laughs> the line isn't the best, but her, she has a story of an ancestor of hers that grew up in the South. And this is a real story. And I thought it was so important to share now with Americans today to help remind them that it's very easy to pigeonhole people into, you know, puppets of the past and people thought a certain way because of who they were and how they thought. Uh, and you know what? Let's present ourselves with some realism. Hey, Rafia, you know what? I'm going to go get up and turn on the light. So hold on. This. And I don't know why I keep losing, keep losing this lady. Can you hear me, Lynn? Or can you not hear me? <laughs> keep losing her. There we go. Hey, we're, we're alive. All right. So, can you hear me, Lynn? Yes or no? Hello. Are you there? Are you ready for your interview, my dear? Yes, I am here now. Excellent. I well, can hear you. Welcome back. So, I've just introduced you to everyone. Now, if you could please tell us about Mr. Dan Dan. Who is Mr. Dan Dan? Around what year was he around? And how is he related to you? And we're losing her again. Uh, Dan Dan was my. You're losing me. You're back. Welcome back. Okay. Dan Dan was my great great grandfather. Okay. Dr. John McLaurin McBride. He was president of uh, Virginia Tech. Mm hmm. Um. I don't remember how many years, but they they consider him the father of Virginia Tech. Yep. Um, I guess you're just going to kind of have to leave me. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's all right. And when he was alive, roughly, you know, which which president, which presidential era are we talking about? As far as Virginia Tech, I think that was after the Civil War. Prior to that, he was at uh, University of South Carolina. Um, I want to say that's where he was when the Civil War broke out. Yep. I do know that uh, he was at he was present at Fort Sumner and heard the first shot that was fired at the Civil War. Yep. Uh, he eventually was asked by Jefferson Davis to become the Secretary of Agriculture. Uh, for the Confederacy, because of his extensive knowledge, he was responsible for perfecting the grain silo in, in America as far as extending the life of the grain, cutting down on spoilage and, you know, the mold and mildew that can build up. Yep. Also, yep. the swine flu he, uh, that, that was killing a lot of livestock. Yep. So I guess that's why he was asked. Uh I guess the thing that, that I thought was interesting, um, our family has given all of his uh, archives to the university to kind of hold on to for us, and they've gone through all of his letters and everything, and I just thought it was so interesting how the mothers would write to him and, and say things, you know, like, I write to ask about my son. I woke up in the night with the feeling... When I got up this morning, I found that a member of our, our family was very ill. Please send me a telegram at once about my boy. And 
he did, you know. Um, he answered pretty much all of the letters that he received about the children. So. Yep, and all these all these letters that. that keep keep losing it. This is this is twenty first century uh, technology, in in we need we need better politicians in Mississippi to get these to get these better internet connections. I'm sitting in Sydney, Australia, and have a better connection. <laughs> it's very sad, sad days. So so far, the understanding is that this gentleman was a professor. I think we've lost her, and I will call back again. Because I am one stubborn bastard, and I will make sure that I'm calling again. This is our first ever interview, by the way. Fingers crossed I'll get blitten. Hey, look at that. More people are back. More people are front. Super hearts, that's great. If I can't get... Yeah, I think we've lost her. Such a shame. That would have been a good interview. Hey there. Oh, I was just about to hang up. You're back. Yep. Yeah. Welcome. Welcome back to Sydney, Australia, and to everyone else who's. Uh, this is not good. South history is not be erased. Hello. Oh, you're back again. Welcome back. <laughs> and she's gone. Yeah, I don't think this is gonna work. Um. Yeah, it's not gonna work. Line is not. I have a horrible reception. Yeah, reception is not good, my dear. I. We may Hello. have we may have to reschedule the interview, and I can call you on an actual, you know, number uh, at some point, and that might be a better way to do it. And then at least that way we're not going to cut out. Yeah. All right. Never left the south. Right. Hello. Yeah. No, it's that's very bad. Very bad. That's going to go. All right, well, that was our first ever interview, and it was clearly a big fail. <laughs> but as I like to do, I like to fail many times as opposed to sitting around and waiting for something to go right. And of course, that gets me into a lot of shit, but at the same time, it gets me somewhere. You know, um, a baby doesn't start walking by thinking about it, right? They get up and they fall over a hundred thousand times. So we'll get better. Next time, if I give an interview, I will have another phone with a backup so I can call them directly. Um, but in the meantime, the reason for this interview, and I will be doing this again, nice to find a handsome man. Uh, okay, I, I'm glad you found one. <laughs> we must defend our heritage. So the point is, and here you are, you know, sitting with, and I, it's getting so tedious to keep saying this, but you're sitting with a free speech progressive who says that trying to remove your history by force is like an ugly person trying to get plastic surgery to look like Jennifer Lopez in the hopes that they can become a superstar. doesn't work that way, right? You've got to work up on who you are. You've got to start from a shit area like all of us did as humans and most of the world still is and basically a big shithole, right? And from there, you work upwards, never forgetting from whence you came. Well, uh, you know, uh, so, uh, that's one of the problems I have with 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 the authoritarians on my side because I'm I'm on I'm on the left as well, and yet I don't want to erase anyone's history. Thank you, yeah. And the truth is, I guess, yeah, the truth is independent of our of our temperamental biases, right? Um, and we've said this before. Yeah, there's a lot of authoritarian leftists um, whom I call the fake left. And you're right. History can show us from whence we came in order to guide us to where we should go. And if we're going to start destroying statues because these people were, were, were slave owners, um, how far are we going to go? Are we going to get rid of the Stalin statues? Are we going to get rid of statues of people who were not vegetarians? The JFK left is practically extinct. There's a civil war going on between us, you know, us liberal leftists and the fake authoritarians. Um, at some point in their ancestors' history, yeah, and in many places they still are. Um, so I'm not here to defend them 
what's next, Mount Rushmore? Exactly, yeah, yeah. But that's a very good argument. So Martin Luther King, he opposed gay marriage. These are all brilliant points. These are exactly correct. So I might not necessarily agree about the war hero business, but that is completely irrelevant because I absolutely uh, find it imperative that we remember where we came from. And if our past is ugly, then even more so, exactly the Lenin statue. That's exactly right. And I gave a speech on this. Well, you know, I'm, I'm on the left and I don't consider myself insane. Don't be sorry, my dear. It's my fault. I should have had a backup number for you. What I'll do, if you don't mind, um, Lynn, if you send me your phone number rather than a left at this point. Well, you know, people have different labels, but my views are pretty damn left. We must paint the White House a neutral color. <laughs> people are venting now. But if you send me a, a mobile phone number, <laughs> um, then uh, then I can call you directly on that next time and we won't have this problem. Um, obviously, just keep it between us. That's That's perfect. Yeah, we'll do that. So we will we will bring this interview back. So my argument, that's a joke, right? Painting the White House. <laughs> my argument, and I think the legitimate argument from a high ground is, first of all, I still maintain that I'm on the left because my views are very much on the left if you are going to ask about my actual views. Hey, good to see you, Mr. Dome Father. Always a pleasure, man. This guy's a beast, this guy, don't father. He's got superhuman resilience. Um, my argument is not about one's personal biases, temperaments, or political predispositions. Switch to the right or libertarian. No, my views are pretty much on the left, but the, 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 the difference is that I'm not an authoritarian. So I do not believe in enforcing my will on anyone else. And the reason being is that by doing that, you will automatically create those on the alternate side, alternate side who want to do the same thing. And this happens throughout history. As Actually, there was a very good scope on Gabversity, if you guys want to see it, that I gave a couple of hours ago. And we had a pretty heated debate, and it was really good. We were talking about societal collapse and some of the factors that play into that. And one of those is the fragmentation of a society, which then props up a dictator. And anarchist libertarian low, but labels are just boxes. <laughs> Yeah, pretty much. Uh, and, and you know, as I said, you know, um, I, I told them as well. And for those of you that are new, when I was living under the dictatorship of Bashar al-Assad in Syria, it is a horrific scene to witness. But at the same time, that is the only type of leadership that survives in a place where you have radical Islamists, communists, uh, free speech liberals, atheists, religious minorities, um, heretical Muslims, um, uh, many types of Christians. When you have a place like that with different laws for each sect or each race, as you want to analogize it into the American um, you know, uh, uh, tradition, uh, you will end up with creating a dictator that will unite the country by force. Not in Syria, no. In, in Syria, you can be gay. There's no problem. Um, being thrown off a roof is in the ISIS held territory of Syria. ISIS hold about 40% of Syrian lands, but the part of the, I don't know. I lived in Syria for, for a while. You're talking about Aleppo. Yeah. Aleppo when ISIS took it, but it's now been taken back. So, so there's not a, not, not that type of problem, but you're right in the sense that, yeah, you're talking about ISIS occupied Halab. Halab is the Arabic name for Aleppo and it was occupied by ISIS, but it was taken back this year. But you're right in that sense, yeah. Um the uh like for but you're you're definitely right about the conservative. So you are telling me you can be openly gay in Syria. Doubt it. Uh Syria is a the Syrian regime under Bashar al Assad, even though it's totalitarian, it's actually very secular. And uh, they were anti-religious extremists, which is exactly what happens when religious extremism gets onto the rise. Well, it's more than Damascus. You you have many uh, places, but but you, you, I mean, we, on a high level, we're on we're both on point. Yeah. 
they beat their women not not in not in syria no not really but they do women if if women ride scooters in syria they're considered prostitutes so you don't see many women riding scooters in syria but in syria if there's a line at the bank and there's a female in the line then the men will uh, allow the women will will want the woman to go get served first i've been to women are abused most middle eastern nations well not in syria not in jordan not in lebanon not in israel um so not in in most and generalizing is dangerous because what it does is it forces it actually gives power to the authoritarian left when you when you i wish that were accurate well, I don't know. I lived in the Middle East for a number of years, so I mean, maybe, maybe I'm just lucky and and didn't see it the way the way you do. Who knows? But it's a trap when, and and everyone else here can see exactly what we're talking about. When you say they, when you create the other, and lump in truth with things that may not necessarily be privileged parts of the nation. I lived on the streets uh, and uh, did not grow up in a privileged section. Yeah, that, that's called, I would suggest that's called a bias, a, a an invisible delusion. Uh, when it doesn't fit what you view as reality, you then, um, yeah, eye candy, but a rational bias that's that's an oxymoron um but the point is that when you generalize which is exactly what um is happening here and it's can biases are based in fact absolutely they all are because we live in a multi-dimensional universe and so each uh scenario contains multiple factors and it's very easy to pick one out so when, for example, you say stuff like that, it's actually partially true. Yeah, yeah, you're actually partially true. And what will happen is you're going to get someone on the other side who's going to see the other component and think that you're not you personally, but that type of narrative is going to label people who are not like that. And that causes the equal and opposite reaction. And that is exactly that point is exactly what exacerbates the situation. So I swear I, I did not plant the truth radar here, but it could not have been a better conversation that we just had because that is exactly the problem, right? And so you go to New York, right? And on my other scopes, I have other scopes which are predominantly liberal audiences where and, and leftist audiences where here this is predominantly a, a much more spread audience. I'm the antithesis of your views. So that's how it is. Well, I don't see it that black and white. I think that nothing you're saying is false. I think that all of it is true. I, I think it's not the only part of it. Trump supporters, right? Well, that's exactly, exactly what, what happens. You're, you're dead on, right? So are there racists? What leftist ideals do you support? I'm not an ideologue. I'm more of a, that's no, look, and, and there's no problem. I don't know if you're a racist, but just because you're a Trump supporter doesn't make you a racist. I don't think I don't think most people think that. I think the propagandist media wants you to possibly think that. Um, the, a big element of the left does say that, to use your word actually. <laughs> a big portion of the left does say that. And there is a civil war. See, my point is this. My point is that there is a civil war between liberal left and the authoritarian leftists. And the authoritarians are winning that war. Uh, and it's. Well, you 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 um, you fall you you fall into monochromatic views. I agree with you that we, I agree with you that they're that they're provocating you and it, it is. And it is not your fault because you're just wearing a hat, right? But I, I don't think that's the complete truth because here is someone who is on the left who is telling you that. And once again, it's this is just my view, and and I I grow up in in a in a liberal environment, and I would su I would submit that one out of every two liberals, at least that I meet, are are, are free speech activists, and absolutely. 
It might be rare. Look, you might be. It is possible to rightly govern nation without God in the Bible. In the maybe you look. Maybe you're right. I don't know. Um, you could be right. Um, but uh, pardon the pun on being right. But there are a shitload of liberals who give a shit about free speech, and uh, you know the best way to find them is through Ann Coulter. I would suggest because she has a lot of friends who are liberal, and I read I read her book in Trump We Trust. I'm right 78% of the time. <laughs> who decides the percentage and who decides if you're right? <laughs> I like this guy. I like this guy. You, I, I have a feeling God told you. The more you speak, the more I see you as a hyper-rational. So there are certain types of personalities that are very intelligent. And so they don't come across people who are able to challenge them intellectually often enough. So they start to believe their own logic and the problem is that they're always partially true um, but i uh, m the only way that this is going to stop is by people my worldview on life experience possibly but i have seen you respond to some of the things i said that don't fit your narrative as explaining it away for example, you said in the Middle East I was privileged when in fact I lived on the streets and lost about 45 pounds. And and that is not an attack on you at all, don't get me wrong. That is a perfect example of how all of us, um, what happened to me, it's a long story and it's in the book, you will read it. <laughs> um, I meant your views come off as liberal privilege. Oh. Uh, I don't know what that means, but but my views are my views. And uh, that's how leftists talk. Okay. But I usually spoil white kids. I agree with you on that. <laughs> and, and what happens is that those who are passionate Trump supporters are exacerbated further towards supporting authoritarian right-wing people um, which is exactly what happened in 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 uh, the last time that the authoritarian right reared its head in the western society back in the 40s and then it moved over sport rich white kids are the extremist leftists and communists in america yeah 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 that's 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 also true um fascism, and i say that as a white guy yeah and the all of that can be true right but at the same time we also want to look for a solution so i like to think of things pragmatically if possible and the goal is i'm out all right the goal is how do we resolve this now there are two ways that we can look at this one is that we can say f the left you know let's all resort to going into our own camps and continue perpetuating this narrative of a divided country which continues to support how do you fix crazy? Well, the first thing you do is learn to see that not everyone that you think is crazy is actually crazy. Uh, there are people, for example, right now, being myself, who was saying to you that my perspective is not one that is that we are rare. My perspective is that I would say half, they are nuts. They are nuts. You can't fix them. What you can do is um work out a way between us that those who are trump supporters and those like me who are sanders type supporters but support free speech first can actually unite uh in a way that supports civilization ahead of these nutbags because together we are the majority now you might love trump i might not like trump that is irrelevant when it comes to the future of civilization no they can't Right. But at the same time, one has to understand that a lot of resentment uh, can turn uh, this type of behavior uh, into a much more radical phenomena, which is what we're seeing. Leaders don't appear to have real jobs. They look like they're charity foundations. It, it, who cares about what they want? Well, they are radicals. I don't know what you mean by they. If you, well, I have a feeling that. Peace is not going to be achieved with Truth Raider at the moment because I feel that they are still in a point of anger, which is understandable. 
your anger is understandable um but it it doesn't help the situation in in terms of the future civilization so to put it the alt left act like they are superior uh it looks that way it looks that way i would submit that there is an ideology palestine a pass and no you see that type of talk doesn't help um because there are a lot of palestinians who are victims of being taken over by hamas it's much simpler than it's much more uh, nuanced than taking a sledgehammer but you're sounding like an extremist that's that's actually my point i know that you don't see that at the moment you must develop work ethical money runs out well here's the thing those with a liberal bias do not share the same work ethic as conservative temperament right but they also possess much more creativity and that is the reason that we are able to talk on periscope i'm anti a, an anti extremist is an extremist um i don't push to pay her deathbed bills well we're falling into this they thing i feel like i'm not really helping this conversation want you to be them not necessarily no not necessarily an extremist um labels everyone as a they see patriots united is actually making perfect sense because for example what is possibly going unnoticed is that it's taking all my strength to be calm right now um when i hear people attacking the left because i know that i'm on the left and i don't think that way but there is there is a definite civil war between the liberal left and the illiberal left the race debate needs to be had absolutely it needs to be had this was one of the original sins of the us as i i spoke about two periscopes ago you cannot have borders and have national security period um i told you the left is at our extreme and must be crushed you aren't coming off extreme you seem moderate i support free speech before anything because that is what we what we've learned throughout history is that that's the only way that we can move civilization further a rational leftist which is rare see i'm not sure i know i maybe who knows i don't know but i just i'm surrounded by people who are um free speech liberals but it doesn't take much of a minority to look like the majority when it's loud one has to remember that the bolsheviks took over the soviet union when they were only 5% of the population and how did they do it yeah i think el brooks is on point how did they do it if we remember our history of the forming of the soviet union we have to remember that the bolsheviks took over the institutions yes they do they do support the communist manifesto from the minority that's true now everyone's dead on that's exactly right my friends we we have found some common ground here that the bolsheviks took over the institutions the government the universities the colleges the schools that's how it works you don't need to be a majority to do that so if we're going to look at it from that perspective now that we all agree on that point healthcare i then blame i actually blame conservatives right we need to vote them out and debate will consume um you have rational views <laughs> it's very kind of you truth writer um yeah i'm going to i i'm going to piss everyone off on all sides i mean that's you can be guaranteed of that right but you, you, i would rather talk to people with whom i disagree um but once again we have to remember as i said most soviets were conservatives most not most soviets most russians most russian populists were conservative right but the bolsheviks were the radical communists who took over the whole country i feel the same way about the right <laughs> but it's good we are all finding each other and that is the point that is the whole point of this channel yeah that we have to find each other otherwise we're going to collapse like every other western society just like lebanon did in the 80s just like syria did in the 1860s just like iran did in the 70s um most germans were conservatives too absolutely absolutely most germans were hyper conservative most germans were christian anti-semitic hyper conservative industrious conscientious people hitler was a minority 
Hitler was a minority. Same thing. And Mao was minority. And this is why I blame conservatives, because Stalin was minority. Conservatives have allowed over the last 40 years for the authoritarians to take over the schools, the universities, uh, and the, the government um, uh, posts. So when you look at it from that perspective, you can't blame Antifa and all these scumbags, right? The blaming lies with the rest of us who have allowed the minorities to hijack the system. Well, yeah, because they, they were living in abject poverty after the Treaty of Versailles. Alt-left was a good move. Um, that's a very good point. I spoke about that in, in the scope earlier today, where I've been calling them the fake left. He called them the alt-left. The reason I'm not sure about it is because Sean Hannity has been calling them the alt-left for the last year and a half, and it hasn't picked up. But maybe Trump can do something different. We hope the extreme left, let me have a look here, uh, get violent because it will give us legal excuse to crush them. Well, possibly, but I would submit that, see, the thing, the weakness, and I've said this before to my, my Patreon guys, and they know what I'm going to say next, but conservatives, the weakness of conservatives, um, extreme left is too timid. Um, Ginny Lee has some good points as well, but I won't comment on that in this scope, probably make it another scope. Um, the, uh, what were we saying? Uh, lost. Yes. The cons conservatives have a weakness. Um, ah, oh, don't get me started on Hillary Clinton. Can't stand her. Um, all right. I think Truth Rider and I are going to form an alliance, my friends. This is what would be the right response to the Nationalist Torch March. All right. The, the right response that has two meanings. The, you have to, the, there was a chain of events that led up to that, right? Now the chain of events started with, uh, it didn't start with this, but I'm going to start from here. It started from, first of all, when Carter got elected, it caused a rebound, which was Reagan. Reagan made the mistake of having Bush the first, who was a corrupt piece of shit. He coming into power was the reason that was the reason that Clinton got elected. Clinton getting elected was the reason it flipped back to George Bush the first. George Bush the first and his catastrophic catastrophic regime is why Obama was elected. Now Obama was an ideologue, so what he did was suppress the conservative viewpoint. Now that was okay from our side temporarily, but if you try and suppress a volcano, what happens when it erupts? You get Trump, right? When you get Trump, you get your audio has gone out of sync. Yeah, I know. It's because when people message me, it starts to go out of sync. I don't know why. When you get Trump, you then get an exacerbation of the fake leftists who have been in power through suppressing everyone else over the last 30 years. When they rise up and want to narrate the country via identity politics, you then create the alt-right, which then rose up uh, and did what they did. So that is my answer to Liran. How do you stop it? Well, what you do is we should have stopped Reagan from having George Bush the first win. The conservatives, if they were smart, right? And sorry, that sounds really bad. They're not unintelligent, but if they had the capacity to see what was going to happen four dimensionally, they would have allowed George Bush the first to lose. So what do we learn from that? Here is what you learn from that, right? You don't let Mike Pence win. Because if you let Mike Pence win, you are going to start exactly the same chain of events that started when George Bush the first won. Okay? That is what you want to learn from this. Antifa left wing escalated the situation. Antifa was very smart, right? Antifa deliberately wanted to exacerbate the right, and they did a good job. As evil and as scummy as they are, they did a fucking good job, right? Um... Yeah, look, you don't agree. That's fine. That's great. I would. I don't want everyone to agree. That would be boring. Um, but, you know, if you wanted to make, they escalate for every confrontation. Absolutely. And, and the radicals on the right fell for it. Uh, and why wouldn't they? They've had their frustration pent up for 30 years. And those of 
you know, of, of a middle class or lower class background who happen to have light skin, who have nothing else left, are going to do nothing but crash a car into people. I mean, we saw it with Anders Breivik in Norway. We saw it with uh, the, the right wing Christians in Lebanon when they massacred the, the Palestinian Muslims. Um, we saw it in Damascus in, in 1860 when the Christians rose up against the Druze and got massacred. Uh, we saw it in, um, in Sudan when the South split from the North. Right? It, it just happens over and over. And every single time it devolves into nothing short of chaos. And the only thing that we could possibly do different is to talk to people with whom we tend to disagree. Is Pence a radical? I don't think Pence is a radical. I think Pence is the George Bush the first to Trump's Reagan. And so I I see a pattern happening over and over again, which doesn't help American society. It helps it helps it devolve. Uh, but that's a small issue. The, the, the point that I wanted to bring across was that it's a much larger chain of events that we have to look at as humans. When if we look at things in the short term, and I said this on Monday, I said the way, and if you remember, look back at my scope on Monday, I said the way you're going to know that this is going to get worse is when the propagandist media blames Trump for what happened. And what happened the next day? They blamed Trump, which was exactly what we said was going to happen. How do you break the pattern? You have to go against your own bias. Bush was a CIA man. Yeah. Well, look, you might be right. I don't know, right? I, I, I can only talk about it, looking at it from, from a pattern. And I, I could be incorrect. It's just something I submit to you guys. How do you break the pattern? Well, we're breaking the pattern right now because we're talking to each other when we otherwise would not be talking to each other. Here you have a guy from the Middle East who's a progressive, who's a free speech dude. You got Liran from Israel. You've got, you know, people from the South. You've got people from the North. You've got people of all different colors here. You've got Arabs. You've got, you know, you've got atheists. We talking to each other is the only way this is going to get solved. Right? There is no other way. The, um, well, there is one other way, which is violence. And then China will take over and Western society will move uh westward as it always has one from texas there you go <laughs> platinum mimi that is the only way the only way like we, we otherwise it's it's very easy right for you know the the, the i forgot his name the truth guy um where is he wherever he was sorry he's not popping up but you know it's very easy for for you know for for the for the uh, Raider, for the Trump supporters, for example, and I mean this, I don't mean this in any derogatory sense at all. I'm saying this with, with respect, you know, you have a legitimate view and, and that's your, that's your right to, to, to support Trump and whatever that's, um, yeah, no, you can't, you can't, first of all, you, you know, we have to just not waste our time with the Antifa style, right? Our job is to find each other. Yeah. Our job is to find each other. I think he is one to help change the country. Possibly. The, the problem with Trump is that his temperament um, is repulsive to a lot of people on the left. And, and if it, it makes them very biased against him. Now, that's their problem. That's their fault. Right. But you can be bigger than that. Right. Like so. So you, you and I are talking to each other, even though we wouldn't normally hang out with each other. Right. We probably wouldn't go to the same things, the same events, the same anything. Right. But we, we have to talk to each other. Otherwise, what happens? I stay quiet, you stay quiet, the maniacs on both sides kill each other, and then we have no country, we have no civilization. There are only two choices. So once you're, once you're confronted with those two options, you really have, you really, it becomes easy, right? I would talk to you any day of the week if, if the other option is the death of civilization. I mean, what type of choice is that, <laughs> right? So, you know, it's easy for you to go home, right? Doing many resist groups. Yeah, absolutely. You know, it, it, like Ernie Banks, you know, could take his guns and his cars and go home and talk the truth and you have your guns and, you know, you, you talk about how awesome it is and how stupid the left is and, you know, and all of that. And it's fun. It's easy. It's fun. You know, if I see someone from Lebanon, you know, I get happy. I can talk about stuff that I can't talk about with you, right? It's easy, right? But it doesn't help anyone because it further exacerbates the chasm between the two temperaments. So it, it takes effort. It takes effort 
bad attitude from the start. They didn't even accept voters' choice. It depends how far back you want to go, right? So, you know, pure pure capitalism, the replacement of white people. Western civilization existed before there were white people. White people were basically monkeys and the Sumerians were the advanced population. The Chinese invented matrix algebra almost a thousand years um, before Westerners came up with it. Um, yeah, so you're an idiot is not an argument. Uh, you're an idiot is an example of ignorance because it doesn't fit within your bias. So the Sumerians who invented writing um, before Westerners were able to write, the alphabet was invented by my ancestors, the Phoenician, which was exported to the Greeks and then to the Romans, who were then able to civilize uh, those who were building Stonehenge in the UK who were killing each other. Um, so that doesn't mean I like that that's history. That means that that is history. And that's history documented by the very white people you claim to have invented everything. So with respect, you've embarrassed yourself. And I don't mean that in a bad way because we can all embarrass ourselves, right? It, it, and what will happen is that those who are radically on the, on the right, how did we get white genetic alterations? Well, that's, I mean, people were white. People had white skin from different parts of the world before language was invented. You know, the first cave paintings, um, the first the first cave paintings were in modern day Basque country, and that is in Western Europe just after the Ice Age, and they were done 20,000 years ago. So, you know, all of us, history doesn't care about your feelings. That's exactly right. That's exactly right. Um, so the prop, and so this is, to me, this is a perfect example of how the problem is not just on the left. As, as maniacal and as ridiculous as the fake left is, and as much of a disease as it is. Exactly. That's exactly right. We're all part of the same history. You know, people of different skins or colors and genetic predispositions. You know, we, we had the Indus Valley come up with the number system. We had, you look Italian, thank you. I don't know what that means, but okay. Um, so, hey, thank you, Shatera Di Carlo. Much appreciated. All right. So, so for me to, oh, we've got a bot here, the box, the bots I block, you know, for me to say that somehow neighbors do, I'm a pacifist, you and so on, reinvigorated my liberalism. <laughs> really. Um, so, you know, you, you look at Ernie Banks, right? Now, Ernie Banks may or may not have white skin. Who gives a shit? Honestly, who gives a shit? All right. So this idea of identity politics to me is a disaster. It's an abject disaster. So we've gone through this before, the Sumerians, the Phoenicians, the Greeks, the Romans, the Hebrews, uh, you know, to, to Eastern, to Western Europeans, to the New World. Everyone has played a part in the building of civilization. The latest and most successful iteration. Yeah, I know it's ridiculous. I don't even waste my time with it, seriously. Um, the most successful iteration of civilization at the moment is the American manifestation of it. Right now, that happens to be populated by, ah, oh, you're more than welcome, Robin, um, by people who happen to have white skin at the moment. And that's fine. And I hope that there are always people of all different skin colors. There's, there's no issue with that at all. Um, but to say that it was created by a specific race is, is in itself racist. That, that makes no sense. Is it true that different races you know, have different slight biases, maybe on some on some collective scale. Yeah, possibly. Um, but as you can see, we had we had, you know, a few hundred people here. But as soon as as soon as people are confronted with their own biases, a lot of people leave. And to me, homophobes, xenophobes, anti women, KK, women, gay, divorce women. Is that what you are? Are you? Um, what do you think of direct democracy like in Switzerland? Pseudo history, Nazi code, such as Aryan race, yeah. Uh, direct democracy like in Switzerland. 
uh, Switzerland used to work. I think we touched on this a little while ago, you and me, but Switzerland used to work because of its demographics. I'm okay with all of them except the gay divorce banner. <laughs> That's a good one. It's actually a good one. Um, uh, yeah, it depends upon the demographics as well. So letting people vote for change directly on important issues. And it's not because of race. That is an illusion. It's because there is a group of people that have been together in a society long enough for a high degree of homogeneity to metastasize or metabolize into the civilization. Yeah. And so it's the same with America. If you were somehow able to border up the whole country. Yeah, imagine <laughs> Um, if you were able, I mean, I, I'm not advocating this at all, but if you were able to border up the whole country, right, and let everyone stay in there together and reproduce over time, then you may possibly get some degree of homogeneity, uh, which would allow the country to then have a better version of democracy in the way that Switzerland does. But that can't happen when you have this identity style politics, uh, which is a which is just a a reanimated version of class warfare. That's all it is. Uh, so it's it's an illusion. I, I see it in, in the Middle East. In the Middle East, I, when I watch Arabic news, right, they talk as much about religion as Americans talk about race. And it's it's laughable because when you see it happen, you realize how absurd it is. Losing my charge. Yeah, that's also true. Yeah, yeah. So that's why I wanted to get um, um, L. Brooks on. Uh, which I plan to do, but she sent me her number anyway. So blend of all cultures. Yeah. I blame all of the USA problems on Putin. <laughs> cool. So I wonder how many followers I lost versus how many I gained over this one. It's so funny. Gab Smack is honestly the most controversial channel out of all of them. It's like, I'm guaranteed to piss off everyone on this channel. <laughs> and then we have like a cult following of people who actually can think for themselves. Why wouldn't the use of direct democracy in certain questions work in Europe? Uh, I'll tell you why. I'll give you a perfect example of how direct democracy doesn't work. You ready? Is Dan Dan. Yeah, it didn't. Oh, um, Dan Dan is, I believe, the great, great grandfather of L. Brooks, who was actually living during the time of the American Civil War. And he has some really good stories that L. Brooks can share with us. Ciao. Ciao, my friend. Oh, that's a bot. Okay, the bot has to go soon. Um, I've got to tell, um, oh, I said, ciao and block. Beautiful. I can block in the past and they've come back. Block. Okay. I've blocked them twice. It's a double block. All right. So I'll tell you, I'll give you a perfect example. I'm going to hide, I'm going to hide chats for a sec. Hide chat. I'm going to give you guys a perfect example of how direct democracy can fail. What happened when they implemented direct democracy in Palestine, right? You had a few different groups, right? Now, out of all of those groups, Hamas won, right? Now, there were, there were Muslim secular groups, and there was a Christian party, believe it or not, in Palestine, and then there was a secular group of Palestine, and there was a pro-Israel group of Palestine. Now, Hamas won. Now, I'm not going to talk about why they won. The point is that when they won, they massacred, butchered, murdered, raped and pillaged every single other political party. And that was the end of direct democracy in Palestine. Show chat. Direct democracy is gang rape. I know. <laughs> they threw people off buildings. This is exactly true. This is exactly true. Now, what has happened since then? Now, you want to talk about indoctrination and inculcation has anyone here probably simon has if you go to memorytv.org you will see young children in palestine watching kid shows you know and they have puppets and la 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 but in palestine have our sponsor tv shows have kill the jews and kill the jews and they're teaching this to children right now, I tried to tell people this about six years ago, and that someone called the police on me. Someone called the police on me for telling Australians 
that Hamas was teaching their children this on children's shows. Yeah. So it goes to show you, um, it goes to show you how anti-free speech um, the West is becoming and why I think it'll decay into chaos. And when you get people on the radical right, like, like the goats guy who just call people an idiot, that is exactly the problem, exactly the problem. And what I said is that you have to go against your own biases. Uh, I was in Australia, in Sydney. Um, you have to go against your own biases to talk to people with whom you disagree. And he went and proved exactly my point. <laughs> it's like you couldn't make this stuff up. I'm, I promise you I'm not paying these people to come on and prove my point. <laughs> it's just hilarious. The far left is also anti-Semitic. This is true. This is also true. And I also take offense to that because I'm Semitic. So, of course, I'm going to get the shits with that. Um, you were cool as a cucumber. Thank you. We are all indoctrinated. We are. We are indoctrinated. We are all indoctrinated. It's like pick your indoctrination. Right? Um, but what happens is that when you're confronted with reality, your indoctrination screw you. Right? So, you know, we Americans... And this is good. This is not a bad thing, right? Americans were brought up to think America and American patriotism. But what happened was, um, it turns out that there was a lot of things from outside that they weren't learning. Someone argued that Nazis are far left. Nazis are far left. Nazis are national socialists. So it looks like it's a far left and far right at once. That this is exactly correct. And that is because according to psychological evidence, Hitler was one of the few people ever to have existed who was both left and right in his biological temperaments. That almost never happens in history. It's feelings clashing with facts. Hey, banter is fun. Someone is coming from Gabversity. You know your stuff. It's feelings clashing with facts. You know what? I think I'm going to end the scope on that. Banter, you won, you won the meme of this episode. Feelings clashing. It is a war of feelings against facts. And feelings are on both sides. Liberal fascism. Fascism always came out of Marxism. Yeah. You're a great person. Likewise, my friend. It's a pleasure to have you guys on here. And when I get, when I get stuff like you guys, it gives me hope that America will survive. You know? I just, I just hope to whatever. All that is good. <laughs> that more people like you can speak up. And, uh, yeah, and Robin, and yeah, absolute pleasure. Are you in the toilet? Oh, it looks like it, eh? Hey? No, I'm <laughs> All right, that was the funniest line of the day. No, I'm actually, I'm actually in my bedroom and I'm going to sleep soon. 250 more million, that's right. Fascists hate Marxism. Ah, the ironies. All right, guys, all the best. America is open for debate. Perfect. Another good meme. All right, guys, we'll see you next time.